Now we're going to go over the basic tuning and maintenance tips. The extinguisher has a modest slide that's running in a little o-ring up and down the reed. And to actually disassemble the call, what you want to do is run the modest slide all the way down to the buck position and make sure that the modest slide dial itself comes out with the bottom insert of the call. So you can just slowly take it apart here, keeping the slide coming out with the bottom. And you'll notice there's an O-ring here that actually creates the two parts to stick together well. Now as that comes apart, you keep that slide on the bottom, you'll notice that there's an O-ring housing right here on the slide itself. Okay, That housing actually goes over the O-ring and that's what slides the O-ring up and down and changes the sound of the call. So when you take it apart, make sure the slide stays down with the bottom insert as you pull the mouthpiece up. Then you can pull the housing off of that O-ring and the whole thing comes apart. Now imagine if you just pull it straight apart and that O-ring is in this housing, it's going to come flying off. And it's going to be laying on the carpet or especially in your tree stand, it'll be down in the leaves. So Make sure you uh, understand how to do that before you take your call apart. Otherwise, uh, you can just get online and order a new O-ring and uh, a reed assembly. It's a tuning kit. Now, the next thing is the O-ring itself can actually come off of the call. And I'm just going to show you how to disassemble the call. And the reed is compressed in here with a little bit of a wedge. Now the reed can be pulled straight out as long as you don't bend or crease or twist the reed. You can just kind of work it straight out and that reed will come out and you can lay that down. And now you have the little wedge piece right here. And this wedge is what puts the compression and holds the reed in. Okay, So that's how the call comes apart. Now the reason you might want to take it apart would be to clean out some sticks or twigs or dirt or whatever it is that has been, you know, building up in your call. And uh, if you need to do that, you can go ahead and take your call apart. Now, when it comes to tuning techniques, what I'm going to do is reassemble the call and show you how you can kind of do tweaking of the tuning and maybe do a little bit of troubleshooting if you need to. Now, the reed itself has little wings on it, you'll notice, like right here. And what those do is when you insert that um, into the insert or on the top of the tone board, this is what we call the tone board, when you slide that in, those wings, when they're flush against the actual call itself there, actually tunes the call. So as long as you put that reed in and the wings are sitting right where they belong, the call will be tuned properly. The next step would be to take the wedge, and it's, as you can tell, smaller on one end, and uh, it's tapered out fatter on the other end. You just run that wedge, and you put that in there, and then you snap it in, and you can tell it'll actually go only so far, and then it holds itself. Once you do that, make sure that your reed is straight so that it's um, lined up and that those wings are touching both sides, and then you're good to go. Your call is actually tuned perfectly. Now, when you put the O-ring on, all you do is smash it down a little bit so that it has an oblong shape, and you put it over the duck-billed end of the reed, just like this. Now, notice I'm pressing down with my thumb, so that holds that reed in place. And I put the O-ring over the end, and the O-ring goes over both the tone board and the reed, and then it slides down. I like to put it all the way down here on the bottom when I go to reassemble it, okay? When it comes to reassembling now, the modest slide, the actual slide itself, has a little tiny tab, and you'll notice it if you look at both ends. One end has a little tiny tab here, a plastic tab, and that side always is facing downward toward the baffle, okay? You don't, if your call is uh, sideways, you want to make sure that it's not upside down and the tab is facing upward. You want to make sure that that tab is facing downward and then the call can slide right into the tongue and groove and it'll slide up and down. Now there are instances where you could get some dirt and some grime inside of the tongue and groove area of the mouthpiece and feel free to grab a Q-tip and clean that out. Um, put a little bit of lubrication in there, very light lubrication. That's non-scented like Vaseline is, works really well. 
um, you know, at, a end of, at the beginning of the year or year-end maintenance on the call itself. So once we have the slide in, the mouthpiece in the tongue and groove, we have the O-ring carriage here. Now, the O-ring carriage goes on the bottom of the tone board, okay? It doesn't go upside down like this. It goes on the bottom of the tone board. So you'll notice there's a little bit of a groove in there in that carriage, and that's what goes around the actual O-ring. So I've placed, and be careful when you do this now, I've placed the, the assembled call with the reed and the tone board inside of the mouthpiece. Then I slide the carriage from the slide over the o-ring so the o-ring now slides up and down and then i just simply press them together and there's a little bit of a key lock right here you'll notice that there's a little bit of a key lock right there and so if you're trying to putting it in without the key lock lined up it won't actually fit all the way together so line that key lock up but make sure that your reed is is down here when you do that so i'm going to redo it again Okay, we have the slide in the groove. You come in here, you put it over the O-ring, right? And then you just squeeze the two together. The key lock is lined up. Now you have the other O-ring compressing the mouthpiece and you just close it up. Then you can run that slide up and down and your call should work perfectly for you. Now I'm gonna go over some advanced tuning techniques, okay? If your call is stored in the fawn position, say for a long period of time, what can happen is you can actually change the memory of the read. And what I mean by that is, if you notice, as this O-ring slides up and down the read here, okay, if the O-ring slides up and down the read, you'll notice that the read will have a little bit of a, a kind of a curve word down. It just curves down. And if this uh, gets stored in the fawn position or the doe position for very long periods of time, then your reed will tend to have a little bit of a memory downward. That's gonna change the tone of your tone. It's going to, the tone of your call. It's gonna make it a little bit higher pitch. So if that happens to you, and I always recommend that you store it down in the buck position, but if that does happen to you, it's very simple to fix that. You can either pull the reed out and flip it around so that has a little bit of a memory upward, which a little bit of an upward memory can be a good thing if you want a deeper pitch, especially for your, your buck grunts. Or you can just put a little bit of a flex or a memory on the reed. Now, before you do this, you gotta be extremely careful. You don't wanna bend or, or crease the reed in any way when you're doing a little flex to the reed itself. And if you do, you're just gonna have to call in or go online and order a new reed. And you know, it doesn't hurt to have a good tune, extra tuning kit anyway, in case you lose an O-ring or want to tune up your call. So they're, they're, they're real uh, reasonable online at illusionsystems.com. But anyway, you can take this reed and you'll notice that I'm putting my finger underneath the duckbill portion. And I'm sliding it about a third of the way up, not quite halfway, all right? And all I do is just flex it upward like this, all right, and give it a little bit of an upward flex, and now it will have an upward curve versus the reverse downward curve, and then that'll change the tone of the call slightly for you if you want a deeper pitch or if you want a little bit deeper or more clickier buck grunt, okay? Once again, don't crank on this thing and, and, and increase it and bend it so it's sticking straight up. You're going to have to pull it apart and try and flatten your reed out again, or you're just going to have to order a new reed if you wreck it. Um, now, another advanced tuning tip is if you get a lot of moisture in your call, what will happen is the reed may stick in this position on the tone board with all that moisture, or it may freeze. And if that happens to you a lot, one thing you can do is pull the call apart and dry it out. Another thing you can do is so once in a while, there will be a little bit of a, a, a ridge right at the very end of the tone board itself, They're right at the very tip. And what you can do to alleviate that, if you're having a little bit of an extra uh, problem with that, some people just put more moisture and spit in the call than others. And there's really no way for us to control that. But if you're one of those people that just end up getting a lot of moisture in your call, 
One of the things that you can do to alleviate it from sticking, if it's sticking a lot, and it would be mostly on the fawn, it's not going to stick on, on the buck or, or the other ones unless it actually freezes solid. But one thing you can do is take a utility knife. And this is where you got to be very, very careful not to destroy your call. If you ruin your call, it's not guaranteed once you tampered with it. So if you do this, you better make sure that you're doing it the right way. Um, but there could be a little bit of a, a sharp edge on the very outside tip of the call. Now, if there's a little bit of a sharp edge there, what you can do is you can have your knife flat, your tone board so that it's flat, and just scrape that sharp edge ever so slightly straight across and flat on both sides, the left and the right side of the outside edge of the tone board. You're not taking anything off of the surface of the tone board. All you're doing is taking that sharp edge off the outside edge about a third of the way at the end. Okay, you can do that and then take it sideways, straight sideways, and, and take that off. Now, they're very, very fine, fine little shaving is coming off here, okay? If you start carving on that thing, it's gonna to totally change the way your call sounds. You do not wanna do any carving on it. Just take a little bit of that sharp edge off, ever so lightly and slightly, and uh, don't do it at an angle, don't dig in, don't carve it, don't do any of that. Just simply, just lightly, lightly take off that sharp edge, both straight down and straight at the side, okay? And, the, and a lot of times that can alleviate if you're getting excess sticking of the call. Now, most likely that's not going to happen, but uh, if it does, that's just a little tip there. So those are some advanced tuning tips when it comes to tuning your call. And uh, uh, if you have any problems or anything with your call, feel free to send it back and, and have us tune it up for you if it's something that you need done or you can order extra parts and uh, do some of that tuning yourself. So.